What's up, everybody? Blue game. Day number three here in Venice, Louisiana. Now, one of my most commonly asked questions is how do we travel as YouTubers? How do we bring all of our gear on all of our trips? But first off, this is my ProDrive TD X series. Starting at the back, we've got our bait bubbler because for almost everything we fish for, we need live bait. In there, I have a cast net in case I got to catch my own bait. We've got our dive gear, buckets with weights in it. And right here on the bottom, we have all of our saltwater rods because on this trip, we were gonna go saltwater fishing offshore, but the wind picked up too bad, unfortunately, and there was no way of doing it. We've got our gator coolers with a lot of our snacks, waters, another shrimp cast net and then here i've got like wetsuits and all of that so right here is something that all of y'all are going to be wondering about this is my new 2500 high country and the reason i got this and got rid of the new toyota that i just showed y'all a few weeks ago was the new 2022 tundra is so nice it's insane but for some reason when they switched to coils they got rid of leaf springs in the back it just cannot handle the weight of my contender. And y'all know I have a 31 contender. A fire truck pulled out in front of me and I tried to stop and my boat pushed my truck and I said, that's it. I've got a family, I've got Kelly. Even myself, I can't be in a truck that can't stop that big boat. So in the back, we've got our bow fishing gear, which is what we're headed to do now. Spear guns, more coolers, more snacks, our camera case. We put all of our luggage in that yellow and black tote and into the back seat of the truck. Some of our most precious cargo. What are you doing? Come here. You wanna say hi to your fans? He's basking in the morning sun. We do bring our computers on trips that we bring the truck just so we can edit while we're here. So Venice is our home. This is the Fish Intimidator Lodge. Captain Ron Price, huge, beautiful lodge over there. These are the cabins you sleep in. Back there in the back is where we clean our fish, and we absolutely love this place. But right now we're headed inland to Shell Beach into the Campo Marina with some dudes that we met on a turkey hunt two weeks ago in Kansas, and I'm so excited. We're going to do some shrimping, some blue crabbing, and we're going to look for ginormous gars, like huge ones. But before we get there, we're going to do something that we've never done before in this channel. I don't think Kelly and I has ever done it either, and we'll see y'all there. right now and I don't know if we're gonna be able to fit with this boat trailer I'm walking up here to just kind of check it out this is pretty cool though the guy says we can just drive straight on and then back up off when we get to the other side so hopefully we'll fit I don't know this is this is pushing it so he's saying to drive up right here and then back off later we might have to drive in a little cockeyed like this and then back out. Well, I guess we'll find out if we can't fit. Right now we're waiting to see if there's any other cars coming and see if we can't get on this thing. We're over here getting subscribers, y'all. <laughs> let me see, let me see. It's a good thing Blue Gabe's driving because I'm literally like having a panic attack just yeah. thinking about this. I think that's the one difference with men and women is like, Women like overthink things, especially when it comes to like boats, trailers, cars, fitting on things properly. Like Gabe's like, all right, well, we either can do it or we can't. And I'm like, mathematically in my head, I'm figuring out how are we gonna do this? Yeah, 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 it'll be, it'll be in my notification. Oh, yeah, yeah. You think you can fit? <laughs> I don't know, you see those sketchy videos over in other countries where they try to put something too big on a boat? Oh, uh, and, but then, <laughs> yeah. And it's over before it starts? Uh, yeah. Right, right. I saw them back at Toyota the other day from one ship to another on Tuba 12. Yeah, no, I ain't no way. Mm. <laughs> I ain't no way. Well, I won't cross. <laughs> we're going to wait a few more minutes to see yeah. if there's any other vehicles coming on board. Yeah. And then I guess we're going to board this ferry with this Pro Drive trailer back here. Check out that big barge right there. We're on the Mississippi River right now. A lot of cargo ships coming this river. Big old ship. Oh my gosh. <laughs> that big bar just went by. We're hitting the wigs.
perfect fit. I probably shouldn't have drank that first Red Bull of the morning. Dude, when you were going on the ramp, that big barge that went by, that we were getting the wake, so oh, the oh. ramp was moving. Wait till we start moving, it's really gonna get sketchy. Oh my gosh. Gates so closing. <laughs> it's gonna feel so weird when we move. This is so creepy. Redneck's like, bro, I didn't sign up for this. Roll down the window. What she think? Huh? What is going on? What's your name? Uh, Roman. Roman. So Roman just told me an interesting fact that I didn't know around here. He grew up being an oyster fisherman. Well, a while back, the levee breached and this river water is now dumping into the bayou, into the marsh. And that's killed all the oysters. It's run all the things that he's worked on his whole life out of there because the saltwater marsh doesn't like the fresh water from the river. That's just something that something so small can change an entire ecosystem yeah. culture <laughs> so now he's here working on this awesome barge paying his bills doing what he can do to survive and that's pretty awesome i mean things that affect us like fuel doubling tripling because we travel all over the world yeah, yeah, yeah. fuel yeah. being so expensive now that's affecting us big time yeah, yeah, yeah. we still make the same amount of money but we're spending three times as much it's nice yeah. meeting you. Well, that, that's all right. You too, man. Y'all have fun. <laughs> hey, we're going fast. This dude's giving her a gallon. Yeah. Three, three minutes, four minutes. Oh, Woo, God. here's that wind. It's the wind, babe. Right next still in there? <laughs> it better be. He's sketched out. guy with a duck boat what is the odds that two duck boats cross at the same time well, a lot of people using some duck boats today I know y'all were expecting us to be at the Campo Marina but I gotta tell y'all a little bit about Kelly Young she has an addiction to the Dollar General the dollar store period look this, this is the only one they had for redneck you realize this is the second Dollar General we've been to Redneck needed a toy. Ma'am, she's got a Dollar General shopping addiction. Can we, can we go fishing now? 
The only reason I added this clip in is because Redneck and I have been sitting in the truck for 20 minutes. She said she had to go pee and I figured she might have fell in the toilet or something. She's been in there for straight 20 minutes and I'm ready to go fishing. I was looking for the right toy. They had a Yoda doll, but it was like $13. Let me see. Out. Let me see if he likes it. Oh, hello. Hello. He loves it. <laughs> Redneck, that, you can't even call yourself a boy dog with that little thing. All right, we got we got 20 more minutes to go, and then we'll be there. Are we gonna need to make any more stops? No, we're good. <laughs> Look at him. He loves it. He needed that while we were fishing yesterday. The destination is on your right, Campos Marina. Arrived. And just like that, we are here. Look at this. We're at the end of the road. So let me show you real quick what we just did. Venice Marina, where we just left, is right here. We had to come up the Mississippi, cross the Mississippi, come all the way around, and now we're at Shell Beach, Campos Marina. Oh my goodness. They're everywhere. There's horse flies like I've never seen before. And a fun fact about Redneck, he hates bugs worse than anything in the world. He'll, ta like, he'll try, look, look. Get rid of you see the bugs? He will freak out. Oh, there he goes. An everlasting memory of Katrina. Oh, we'll show you that in a minute. There's a lot of names, unfortunately, on that. Holy cow. The horse flies Probably though. 250 people. It's crazy because Katrina was quite a while ago and you still see effects from it. Driving down the road, a lot of abandoned houses, houses with the roofs ripped off it's just one thing mother nature don't play so now we got to go find robert campo himself i think i'm pretty sure and he'll tell us in a minute if i'm right campo's marina is the oldest marina in louis in, uh, in louisiana that's what's crazy so we're here we're at the oldest we're at the first where it all started He's got a hundred plus charter boats that buy bait from him almost every single day. And the boat that we're going shrimping on supplies all that bait. It's pretty dope. I think this is it right here. Pretty sure. Yep. Yeah, look right here. It says bait. That's this guy right here. Hey boss. You know where Robert Campo is? Inside. Okie doke. Inside. I don't know what we're gonna do about these horse flies and redneck. They're gonna give him such bad anxiety. Well, I got him a teddy bear. <laughs> He's gonna need it. Now that's something I ain't never seen before. Look at that elevator. It's got a winch like we pull the big gators up with. That's a redneck elevator. Man, hmm. plywood. We're gonna leave redneck in the truck for a minute, even though he might freak out. No, we're going to have to bring him with us. Let's go see Robert Campo. Oh, one's already on my head. Come on. From my experience, anytime you get near like a swampy saltwater style marsh, the horse flies are always bad. You guys, this dude I'm about to introduce you to is a trip. I met him in a turkey hunting camp of all places. Look at this right here. The man hey. with the... Look, at, look, I came just in time. You ain't lying, huh? <laughs> give it three more crops to see. Oh, yeah, later. right. Look at this big old... Did they kill that out there in the bayou? What? That big old mountain lion. No, that's Colorado. Oh. Colorado, man. How you doing, Gabe? Dude, can we talk about the horse flies that are outside? Dude, talk about them. Talk about them. Holy mackerel. Dude. They give my poor dog anxiety. All right, too, guys. So we had to run to town to grab some groceries for the rest of the week. And look what we found. This is Johnny's Crab Traps here in what town of Louisiana? New Orleans. Oh, we're in New Orleans? We've been out in the bayou for so long, we don't even know where we're at. We drove past here, and you could all you could see is crab traps. So I pulled in. Babe, come here and look at this. Quick. 
So all we could see was crab trap. Oh, I just about tripped. All we could see was crab traps. So I pulled in, of course, because I need some. And look at this. Howdy. You guys there are building some serious traps. Dang. Holy mackerel. They've got everything here. One guy cutting the wire. Oh, man. This is like a crabber's paradise. So fortunately, he said they sell crawfish traps. So we were buying 10 of those and we're buying 15 crab traps and we're gonna come back by on our way home and he's gonna tie them down on the boat and we will be back to crabbing soon at home because the traps that we bought last year don't catch crabs at all. We can't catch any crabs in them. So it's pretty interesting. Now we gotta go find some bait and we're gonna set traps in this video. What a cool find here in Louisiana. He said there's 300 traps on this trailer alone. So he's got red, yellow, blue, green, and that's it. So we bought five of these, five yellow ones, and of course we had to get five blue ones. Man, I am so stoked I found this place. Oh, right here. This is a complete trap. Two pieces of rebar, a buoy, ready to go. Now, are you Johnny? Yeah. I'm so glad you were here. We, um, we're going to see if these traps catch crabs and crawfish. Well, they catch. They, they catch. I sell 50, 60,000 traps a year. A year? A year. Holy moly. At least. What's that thing up there? Something oh, old that's school? A, that's a, no, God brought me those dungeon crab traps oh. from, from uh, up in Washington somewhere. Yeah. He wanted me to build them for them, but I can't get stainless steel wire and stuff. Yeah. You ready to go set a trap? Yeah. Let's go. So here's the deal. Yesterday when we got back from buying the crab and the crawfish traps, we got some speckled trout scraps from one of the charter guys that was right there. And we came out to this canal last night and we set, or not last night, yesterday afternoon, and we set all 10 of our traps all throughout different locations. Then we went back to the house, got on the boat and went and filmed half of a gar fishing video for Kelly. Got back late last night. I said, I gotta go pull at least one crab trap one crawfish trap to see if i have any start pulling them and my buddy jay who we're staying with he's like this is the wrong canal this is salt water sure enough i pulled all 10 and they all had little baby blue crabs so last night in the middle of the night after not sleeping for two days i came and reset all these traps in this little ditch minus two that i couldn't find last night so there's eight in this ditch right here so let's see what's in them one thing's bad, we didn't bring a bucket. We have nothing to put anything in if we do have them. Now, one thing I will say, last night this ditch had six inches more water in it. Uh oh. Mm. Ooh, they're nice and red. Dang, that ain't bad. They're not huge, but there's crawfish. Hopefully they don't have a heat stroke, but we're gonna pull them as fast as we can. We've got them just every hundred yards. For those of y'all that are from Louisiana, leave a comment below and tell me what kind of plant this is. Because last night in the dark, I tied my trap to it. And holy cow, did it mess me up. Hey, we're gonna have enough for a little cookout. For sure, dang. Get back in there. It's cool how red they are. These traps are really nice too. These traps were 20 bucks each. And the cool thing about these is the turtles won't eat them. Why are so many of them dead though? You might have had a heat stroke. Hmm, Cannot eat lower. dead crawfish. And almost all of these are, well, a bunch of them are dead. I don't know why they would, maybe they got too hot. It's possible. You think they go in the mud to cool off? Yeah. Not risking it. Those are too That's small. Dead. Dead. 
Well, hopefully that's not a reoccurring thing. On to the next one. That one's way out there. I can see him in it. Some extra bait. Man, we might have just Ooh. learned the lesson the hard way. A bunch of these are dead too. Dang. I don't know why they would be dead. That was alive. See, their heads are torn off. Hmm. Dead, dead. Man, that ain't good. I wonder if next time we shouldn't pull them early in the morning. Yeah. Dang, that's depressing. That one's alive. He's just acting like he's dead. Well, the coons are going to eat good. Yeah, they are. Put these in the bag. We actually started putting them in a public bag. In the brand new one week old truck. Go Gabe figure. <laughs> so Gabe's emptying the bait in the trap and this is our little hole so far. Oh, now the bag doesn't want to open. Look at them all in there. That's a snack a -tizer. A little appetizer. I'm having the case of memory loss on remembering if this is where I started or stopped putting them out last night. We literally were going on no sleep, no, oh, where are they at? I know I got one right here somewhere. Anyhow, needless to say, I was tired when I did this last night. Man. Whoa. Look at that one. That's the mother load right there. We need a bigger bag. Uh, yeah. I should have planned this one out. <laughs> or we should try not to film five videos at one time. True. We we're already tired. We just got off the boat from shrimping. 42, 43. 45. 45 crawfish. And only oh, four dead that. ones. That's good. Oh. Yep. That's it. All right, come in here close, come in here close. So we came home, took a shower, drank some energy drinks, and now we're back going wide open. We're actually filming two videos at one time. Upstairs, we're cooking a humongous crab boil, and that's what we're gonna put these in. But we're not gonna show you the whole boil, we're only gonna show you the crawfish part. If you wanna see what's really going down up there, you're gonna have to tune into my shrimping video, but check this out, check this out. Hello! I wish we could take them all home. There's, I know, their colors are so cool here. So I've had this hose just trickling in here with the lid closed so the water could overflow and they are really clean. Look at that. Definitely lively. like that ever but right out here out front is a road that everybody's screaming down look at it he is pissed <laughs> he's like i just put luke in time out They sing at funerals with the bagpipes. Oh yeah. Sing 
I feel terrible right now. This is my kids' favorite thing to do is catch crawfish. But, well, hey. Today's our last day. See y'all later. Sacrifices must be made. Put them on top of the crabs. Watch them down. Now, if you want to see the rest of what's in this pot, you got to watch my newest shrimping video that will be out, I don't know in which order, before or after this video. <laughs> Hopefully after the crawfish video. <laughs> and we still got more to go. Look in there, babe. Show them right there. Oh, yeah. we got one dude. Oh, well, we got two. Two. Put them in there. Two escapees. We got two escapees. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Help. Oh. <laughs> I feel terrible. Yeah, I can't feel bad. So how long are those going to cook for? Those are going to cook five minutes. But within the next five, we're going to throw them shrimp in there, too. And then five like after that, that we're going to be down on that dock eating. And we yeah. will see y'all there. Now that it's quiet, I can introduce our main man, Zachary Campo. So this is Robbie Campo, who you met earlier in the video, son. Now, does he actually call you his son or? Yeah, he calls me his son. He calls it, calls it some other things, but you know, he told me you, you were crazier than a sprayed roach. Oh yeah, about as wild as Just give him a quick glimpse, quick glimpse. Mm. Y'all check this out. Now these crawfish aren't very big. But guess what? They're gonna eat just like the big ones. Grab you one and see what they taste like. Now listen. So look, he's feeling crawfish a different type of way than me. Well, I do it, you break it, you suck the head, and you, you peel the meat off. Boom, that's how it's done. Can we get a rematch of that, or a, a redo of that? Or what, how did you do it? Show sure, so here, much. look. I'm a twist. You're doing it wrong, you twist it. Pinch the tail. You squeeze the head. No, you gotta keep the head in this finger. Oh. And you my break God. it, and then you. Mm, I'm pretty squeeze good. the tail and pull it out. Mr. Campo. Hey, man. His dad just showed up. He smelled the food. <laughs> I sure do appreciate you inviting call. us down here. You and the whole group down here in Shell Beach. Show, show these two camera guys right here. What's your name again? Ronald Alfonso. Andrew. Y'all, they've been helping the whole entire time. <laughs> this whole crew down here at Shell Beach has been awesome. Right now, this video's ending. Stay tuned, though, because we've got several, like, I think five videos coming, and Kelly's got some awesome ones, too, from this week here. What's up? Where's the beer? The beer? <laughs> Your son drank it all. I'm fresh out of beer, and my oh, mouth's on fire, up. so grab me one. Oh, hey, y'all know the routine. I would, not, I would not doubt that, all right? I would not doubt that. Thanks for watching. Thanks for subscribing. Thanks for all the positive comments, and thank you. Bro, buddy here helping us cook this boil. Oh yeah. Y'all, it's gonna get real. Not real look. soon, but right now, we're gonna dump them out. Like Jake always <laughs> says, it's time to get up out of here and get the heck out of shape.